fastest way to build long-term financial strength. Um, you know, when me and Kyle sold books door to door um, back in college, we both won a president's club. He won it more than I did. Um, while I was there, I talked to the president and the owner of the Southwestern company, Spencer Hayes. I got one question in with him and I asked him, Spencer, how do you make a million dollars a year? He says, you learn how to make $100,000 and then you'd learn how to teach 10 people how to make $100,000 and then teach those 10 people how to teach 10 people as well. So after COVID kind of took away my jobs and my opportunity of what I was doing before, which was the executive headhunting, he and I were just talking about uh, where, did, where did I want to be in five years and how did I want to be living my life? Essentially, if I was doing what I was doing before where, you know, with bonuses and everything like that, I was looking at a quarter million a year. I was like, but, you know, every year I wake up and I start back at zero. Every year I have to wake, I have to wake back up and grind. And I was working, you know, 7.30 in the morning, sometimes till 9, 10 o'clock at night, uh, 11 o'clock if I was working on the West Coast time. And so those days really wane on you. And the opportunity to build, um, like you said, residual empire, the fastest way is recruiting. And as you know, I love selling, but what I don't love is getting rejected and having to pound the pavement, so to speak, for, for forever. And the quickest way and the easiest way to not have to do that is to have a great group of people that you get to work with who you're helping them go out there and sell, reach their financial goals, and then help them too if their goals are not to go out and just be a super salesman to learn how to train, recruit as well. So when I committed to coming to Family Heritage, the vision was minimum five years. While I want to be, while I would love to achieve all the sales accolades, what I was really more focused on, and, and Kyle and I talk about this often, is building an organization. You know, it, it's not a lot of fun if you make a lot of money, but you don't have any friends to share the experiences with. So field recruiting is really about going out there and talking to people about what do you want to do with your life? Not every, not every day that we go out there, are you going to be able to find somebody who's going to be the right type of person to work with us? But you never know. You know, if there's someone who's like, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed, you know, 22 year old who's sitting at a front desk of a um, plumbing company, you're like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, hey, good morning. How are you, sir? And like, you know, super excited about life. Ask them, you know, hey, you know, are, are you the son of the owner here? Or, you know, what brought you here? You know, always just try to ask questions. Don't, don't make field recruiting about field recruiting. I just talk to people genuinely and get to know them. And typically, if you ask enough questions, they ask you what you do. And that's the best part. And that's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about is just get to know them so well during your either your demo or if you just see someone out in the field. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you guys. Most of the people that I am putting in front of Kyle are people that I work out with. Um, I go to the gym pretty much every morning or in the afternoon if I have to. And I'm just looking around at guys who I'm like, or, or girls too, who are like, who, who's sharp? Who's someone who's disciplined that I see in here? Um, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning, five, five thirty. I've talked to every single dude there about working with us because every guy who shows up at five o'clock in the morning has some sort of discipline or girl. Cause there, there's, uh, there's two there as well has discipline to show up and do that sort of routine and do something that pushes themselves daily. So I'm looking for people who are like-minded because this job, it, it's not for everybody. You know, there's a difference between what we do and doing sales at a retail store where people come to you. You know, we go out and we're, we're hunters in a big way. Um, so I'm always looking for people who, you know, are willing to go grab the apple off the tree, so to speak. And that just talks about getting to know them and their story, you know, Listen for a reason why they might have the conviction that on a really, really wet, cold day, rather than go home and make an excuse, you can find a reason to believe in them that they would get up and go talk and walk into the next business with a smile on their face. So what I do, why, why do I do this? I want to help enough people get what they want in their life. So that way I can achieve my financial dreams as well. I mean, insurance Financial advising and entrepreneurship are some of the greatest ways to make a ton of money. And, you know, I told Van and Kyle this when I came in, I would love to have a seven figure annual income. I mean, that means really pounding the pavement hard now for myself. So that way I can teach others how to do it. 
but I don't really see myself being able to sell a, and be able to commission a million dollars a year. The only way that I'm going to be able to do that is to be able to help enough people obtain their life goals. So that way I too can obtain mine. So when I came into family heritage and I started a few weeks ago, I came in with the purpose. Every person that I've talked to that I felt like would be a good addition to, you know, my inner circle. These are people that I'm asking them to invest their financial futures and my, me, CJ, Kyle, Van's ability to train them to make money. And I don't take that lightly. So I ask people, so that's what I approach people about is, do you trust me enough to listen to an opportunity to put your financial future in my hands to train you? You've got to do the work, but we will tell you how to get to where you want to be. And um, if, if you have that sort of conviction where you want to help people better their lives, you're almost being selfish, not talking to people who are just being told that they're worth seven twenty five, eleven twenty five an hour, who are, are, are interested in what you are and who you are and why you're doing things. And, you know, just, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever eaten lunch somewhere and, and the waitress or waiter just kind of, kind of seems to mingle around your table and everyone else seems to do it. You know, you, you want to have that sort of aura that people are curious about what you do. Um, field recruiting is, is kind of easy for me. And I don't mean to toot my own horn like that. Hold on one second. I got to drink some water. My mouth is dry. But when I go out, you know, when I walk into a business, you know, I stand tall. You know, I stand proud. I wear my family heritage badge. I smile. And if I can tell that they see that I'm totally a salesperson, you know, I don't talk about insurance. You know, if you look at this, the sales talk, the approach, the first like three or four questions aren't even about what we do. It's hi, uh, my name is Patrick. I was coming from the post office talking with Chad Davis and Marion, had to talk to Robert Burnett and Old Fort, but I saw your business and it kind of caught my attention. Thought I'd stick my head in. What do you guys do here? You know, you're not even talking about that you're there to talk about cancer. So when you talk, walk in tall, proud, like be, being confident, that both what you're doing and what you can offer them would be a great step in their financial career with that conviction about yourself. Um, it's really hard not to want to get up and see people who make me smile, engage me in conversation and not give them the opportunity to at least talk to Kyle, my best friend since we were like six years old, about an opportunity that, you know, I've been watching Kyle do this for seven years, monitoring his progress laughing at him for seven years, being honest with you. But then at, when push came to shove and after my industry where, you know, I commissioned in 2019, well over $150,000, I was like, yo man, I'm ready to come work with you. And I'm not going to just come in and just do a sales, like just make some money in sales and, and say, thank you so much for the commissions and the re residuals. Like, let's do this. Let's really build, let, let's teach other people who've never had this sort of opportunity to do it. Because every person here knows that when you get going to this job, you can make a six-figure income and then stay on that sort of level and build upon that to the point where you're making that residual. You know, isn't that why we all came to Family Heritage or, or one of the reasons why is if we're here for five years, we can make enough money that we don't have to like go out and have to sell every single day. So, you know, if you're going to go be a great salesperson and that's what you want to be, excellent. But if you see yourself here for more than six, 12 months, it really benefits you to just talk to any person who puts a smile on your face or is engaging to just ask them like, you know, where do they see themselves if they're happy with where they're at? And if they just be willing to watch a quick bit, you know, it's a long video, just be able to acknowledge it, to watch a video to see if this would be a career that would be um, worthwhile for them. Just give them the opportunity. Yes or no. So um, that's really my bit. Did, we, did you want me to go anything over anything more technical, Kyle, like how I approach people or what would you like next? Dude, that was perfect. Yeah, and real quick, Patrick, because I think it's good that people have a good, like, say, one-liner or just, you know, how, what, what do you do whenever you actually approach uh, a sharp person at the gym or in the field? It's probably a little bit different if you approach somebody in the gym or in the field, but what do, what do you kind of say? Like, what's your first, first approach to somebody like that? Great question. Um, it's... Uh, what do you do? Why do you do it? How long have you been doing it? How did you get into that? Do you see yourself continuing to do this? Five years, if you keep doing this, are you still on the same path that you are now? Or is there a, tra a trajectory to it? 
you know, just, I just honestly, the, the, the one liners um, off the top of my head, it's, it's more just finding out their situation. And, and then honestly, guys saying, do you want to do this? But is this is what you're doing now, what you want to be doing in the next five years. Do you see how you, uh, what's the, what's the line that I used? I'm just coming to me. Do you see how you're going to make the next step in your life? You know, like, do you know how, you know, I ask people like, do you want to make six figures? Who doesn't say yes? Cool. How do you plan on doing that? I don't know. Would you be willing to watch a video? Sure. Like, do you make six figures? Yeah. Done it before doing it again. Oh, cool. Yeah. Here, what's your number? I'm going to uh, connect you with my buddy, Kyle, and then edify them. Oh my gosh, man. Those three-way texts you have to, uh, and by the way, I, I'm simplifying a, a much prolonged conversation, but you really need to build this job up to be awesome. Cause if you don't think that this job is awesome, why the heck is anybody else going to? Because they're looking up to you. You are the job to them. So really build it up. And I mean, this job, as you guys know, when you're rocking it, it's so much fun. Like selling is fun. Rejection's not so much fun. But selling, sitting down with people, demos, referrals, like that's what this job's about. And uh, by the way, if you're doing a great job field recruiting, you're going to get a ton of referrals because they're going to want all their friends to know about it. So it's, it kind of goes hand in hand with referrals. So by field recruiting, by sharing an opportunity, you're showing that you're also more than a salesman and getting the opportunity to talk to more people and then asking them, hey, you know, does this seem cool? They're like, yeah. Who are some other people who might think that what, I, what, what I'm doing is cool? Cool. What's their name? What's their cell phone? Are they on Facebook? How do I connect with them? Are they on Instagram? Excellent. Let them know I'll be reaching out to them through a text. Boom. Like you just have to be willing to just to, to share what we do and have a long-term plan. If you want to pound the pavement and sell for forever, heck yeah, power to you. Power to you. I have a lot more fun when I work with my managers. And I think I'd have a ton more fun working with people that I get to help train and change their life where they're going from, you know, making two to three thousand dollars a month to eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. And you know, I think that'd be a fun process to work with people. So I do this because I want to, you know, I look up to Kyle, I look up the van and want to kind of build a little organization myself. So that's not, that's just for me, you know, recruiting is definitely not for everyone, but if, if your long-term goal is to not be a super salesman and you want to change people's lives, it's worth just asking people where they see themselves in five years. That is awesome. Hey, Patrick, I know you have your sales appointment at 8.30, but real quick, what time, what, what's your morning routine? I think this would be good. I know you said you go to the gym early. What does what your mornings look like? Uh, my mornings start at night. Um, I, you know, before I go to bed, I read a, a testimonial um, in my, sale, my handwritten sales talk. And, you know, me and Kyle talk, me and Kyle talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, I, my, I, the first three weeks that we were doing, I was doing this job. My sales talk was all over the place. I had enthusiasm, I had charisma, but I had no organization to what I was saying. So uh, last week, well, before last week, I just wrote the entire sales talk uh, word for word out plus all the rebuttals everything everything that uh plus the aflac objection everything that there is to say in a sales thing that we have written down i wrote out and i read that to myself uh every single night before i go to bed so i'm kind of going to bed with like all that fresh in my mind i wake up at four o'clock um and when i uh, in the morning because i kind of take that first hour of the day to find peace within the day uh find myself like do a little meditating stand in the shower um, just really find center. I find my center point. And then from there, I try to be in the gym between five and five 30 work out really hard with uh, my buddy and the guys that I know there, um, you know, rinse off shower there and then get to the field, listen to these calls and be, be out in the field by 8. AM or eight, like, you know, like be at the place where I'm going to be doing my first appointment or meeting by 8. AM. So that's kind of my morning routine. Just, you know, get up four o'clock, gym by 5, 5.30, and then out in the field by 8. But, you know, I just have a ton of energy. You're feeling awesome, by the way. It's hard not to approach people when you've, you know, worked out really hard. And then you, like, you walk into a, uh, you know, to a business looking sharp. Dude, that was awesome. Holy smokes. Guys, I, uh, this, this was unbelievable, Patrick. You, you actually crushed everything. There, there's so many rich nutrients that you just said that, 
your your day starts the night before. You you read your sales talk. You write it out. Um, you 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 meditate in the morning. I mean, what you do before seven a.m. is more than a lot of people do in a day. I mean, just uh, you've already worked out hard. Uh, you 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 know, you eat healthy. You dress sharp. Look good. You feel good. And uh, yeah, and you produce at a high level. And you're getting there. You were doing all the things right now that's setting you up for a big big future here, man. I'm very excited. Love working with you. It's very fun. And uh, yep, we're going to grow the uh, Western North Carolina and surrounding area very aggressively here soon. I'm excited. So guys, hopefully you got Thanks some good, you uh, good notes out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with your, with your appointment, man. So you guys just kind of cleaning up this call real quick, a couple takeaways that I just want to share that he kind of said that uh, I just want to kind of re-go over is a few things of just, you know, he has his recruiting goggles on all the time. It is not just, while you're selling insurance, guys, I didn't recruit Patrick while I was selling insurance. I recruited him because he's a personal network. He's, he's, you know, he's going to be the best man in my wedding, right? So your pipeline, like your personal network guys are going to be the top producers on our team, right? Uh, you know, Brian Glazinski, one of my, one of my best friends, one of the top producers in the company for five straight years now, right? Like your, your top agents are going to be people that you're very close with. Like, let's just be honest. It, it's uh, you're going to meet some sharp people out in the field. We're going to find some sharp people on Indeed, you know, zip recruiter here and there. But I'm telling you, your personal network. Um, and guys, I've, I've been recruiting Patrick for years. He's rejected me probably a hundred times. He's like he said, he's kind of laughed at me a few times. But guys, you know, people are in a totally different situation. There's a lot of people out there after COVID. They don't have the same job they used to have. They took a pay cut. They're furloughed. Whatever it is. Um, so just let's be honest with ourselves. You got to have recruiting goggles on all the time when you're out there generating your recruits during the day, you have to edify. Like they look at you with a job. They don't, they don't really know what we do. Like they don't really know what a career looks like, but they see you. And if they like you, they're going to like the job too. Cause you're, you're the face guy for the job. You're the only person that they know that works here. So how, how you present yourself and your enthusiasm and your actions and what you say about it is all they know about it. Right? So you're the one that sells the job. The job won't sell itself. You're the, you're the, you're really the person. So you got to be enthusiastic, share the opportunity. Um, yeah. And guys, if, if all you got today was, man, I need to wake up earlier in the day and have a routine more like Patrick. I'm not saying everybody here should wake up at 4 a.m. Uh, that, that's, pre <laughs> that's pretty insane. That's pretty early. But geez, I mean, just think about what your career would look like if you just woke up 15 minutes earlier, 30 minutes earlier. And uh, we're able to do something hard in the morning, like working out, right? So just before you go out to the day, um, I meet Patrick out in the field, and he's tons of energy because he's already worked out. You know, that's the hardest thing you can do for the day, get it done super early. And uh, I love the fact that ever since Patrick started working here, I actually – I have never done this. I work out before I go to work now. And uh, I'm telling you, it, it, it makes a difference. So there, there are so many takeaways, edifying the AO, edifying the job. Um, wow, this is a rich, and this is this is definitely recorded. So I would definitely recommend listening to this again, guys. This is uh, some great stuff. So, uh, yep, we're going to wrap up this call, guys. So a couple last things. Um, so many incentives going on. I'm just going to remind you guys of some awesome incentives. We have the Tony Robbins incentive going on right now. So make sure that you get over fifteen thousand in premium. Um, you have a couple weeks left to do that um, since uh, since it started here at the beginning of the month. Uh, we have. The five week, we're in a five week month right now. This, this only happens once a quarter where there's a five week month. So March is always one of the biggest sales months of the year because we got one extra week to do it. So everybody on the call, everybody needs to be getting a big monthly bonus this month. There's no excuses not to. Don't wait until the last week to do it. Let's go ahead and, and, and get it done now. And we can pad the stats the last week of March to get an even bigger bonus, uh, which is really cool. Um, we also have the green jacket, the identity jacket. Uh, we are in. We are over the halfway point for that. So now time is of the essence. We need to start producing right now to get that jacket. I promise you, when you get up on stage in front of a thousand people, you're going to feel like a rock star. You want to be up there uh, when everybody else is getting it. It is. It is. It is the. Uh, it still gives me chills thinking about walking up on stage in front of a thousand people and you getting a student offer jacket in front of the entire company. It. It is awesome. Awesome feeling to have. And yeah, and just all the other things. You know, Minneapolis and Seneca. There, there's so many different things. So we are halfway done with the week. Um, you know, today's Thursday. So it really doesn't matter what you're sitting on for the week right now, whether you have zero field recruits, zero sales, wherever you're sitting at for recruiting sales, most people's weeks are made on Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday. And uh, so we're only halfway done with the week. So it's not how you finish the week. It's how you, sorry, it's not how you start the week. It's how you finish. 
So let's finish the week strong and uh, let's go have some fun today. And guys, recruiting goggles, look for that. Uh, go approach somebody that scares you. I'm telling you, that's how you get better in this job is recruiting people that scare you or approaching businesses that scare you. That's how you sharpen your skills. So the, the next sharp person that you see, just, just have a casual, casual conversation. You don't have to hardcore recruit them the first second you say just, Hey, what do you, you know, what, what do you do for a living? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Do you see yourself working there forever? Cool. Like, would you be open to, you know, I think that you would do well here. Uh, you know, would you be open to learning more about what I do? Approach somebody today that kind of scares you. Um, and I promise you, it's not going to be so bad. So let's build, let's grow guys. Um, uh, very excited to be in business with you all. Um, go have a good Thursday and we will see you guys uh, tomorrow. We have the, uh, <clears throat> um, the 10 AM uh, corporate call, uh, the recruiting rally call. So make sure that you get on that tomorrow at 10 a.m. They always have a new guest speaker, and those are awesome. So make sure that you guys and, and your team is on the call tomorrow. We will see you guys then. And, uh, yep, have a great Thursday, guys. Be safe. Awesome job, Patrick. Thank you.